Hello and welcome. Welcome to the fourth video. Welcome to the fourth video on queue data structures where we'll discuss queue, where we'll discuss circular queue. So it's our fourth video. Prior to this video, we have discussed in second and third video uh, about linear queue, that is NQ and DQ algorithm and implementation of a linear queue in C language. And in video number one, we have discussed about queue, queue its properties, application and everything. So if you're directly coming to this video, I request you to kindly watch those videos so you have a uh, little bit idea about queue. So let's start with the circular queue. Why circular queue came? now comes a circular queue so uh, the drawback that occurs in a linear queue is overcome by using circular queue so what circular queue is trying to say that there was a drawback there was a drawback in circular queue and i have explained you this in my video number two so i request you to kindly watch that video number two you will have a complete idea what was the drawback but i'll uh, give you a, a example so if i talk about this Q. Is this queue full? No. There are two elements. There are two spaces which are still vacant. So suppose I I you know uh, I call an operation n q having element five. So I just wanted to you know enter this five element. But will I able to enter in a linear queue? No, because linear queue says if if r if rear is equal to max minus one what is max minus one size of q if rear is equal if rear rear has reached to the position of max minus one in that case your q is full either you have a element vacant spaces but even then you cannot insert because once rear reached here suppose you have deleted four also 12 also 67 also and your front is now pointing here now front is no more pointing here you have five vacant space but since rear is at max minus one you will type that you you will say that Q is full. So this was the biggest drawback. This was the biggest drawback of linear Q. So if that is what it is saying that if empty space is available in a circular Q, the new element can be added in an empty space by simply incrementing the value of rear. But if I talk about linear Q, if there is an empty space, you cannot enter. But if it is a circular Q, circular means when last node is connected to first node. When last node is connected to first node, then that Q becomes what circular Q. This means when suppose my rear is here if if uh, if i'm making a request to insert an element so definitely if the front element are available then rear will come here fine so in a circular queue all nodes are represented in a circular that is in a circular queue nodes are represented in a circular fashion you can see that i have no now made a circular queue where you can see that there are 10 spaces starting from 0 to 9 Fine, where uh, front is uh, representing index 0, rear is in representing index number 5, and there are empty spaces. And what is the benefit? That after 9, 0 comes. After 9, 0 comes. Now you might be thinking, how after 9, 0 comes? So I'm giving you a good example now. Suppose, now uh, you can see this. You have a Q here, and suppose you have an element uh, 5, 9, 10, 12, 15, and 6 and then three so front is zero and rear is six fine now you have deleted two elements so five and nine what will happen front will move this is what i have already explained you in linear queue when we delete delete from front when we insert insert from rear now i want to insert some value suppose i have to insert uh, uh 17 what will happen i will insert over here so will i simply increment rear is equal to rear plus one no absolutely wrong why in this case it is okay in this case it is okay that if you increment r is equal to r plus 1 then r will come here and then you can insert 17 but what happens if you want to insert suppose you want to insert 21 what you will do you will if you will increment r is equal to r plus 1 that is 7 plus 1 you will get 8 but you have no 8 over here so what you have to do is that you have to little bit amend in the formula is that r is equal to r plus 1 mod max mod max so what what exactly it will give you what is max max is size of q if i say what is the size of q 8 from 0 to if i say what is the size of max max is 8 is from 0 to 7 now if i if i my rear is at seventh position now if i want to increment so what i'll do r is equal to r what is r 7 plus 1 mod 
what is the value of max 8 so 8 mod 8 is what 0 so the new value of r becomes 0 so that is after 7 rear will again point to 0th position so this is actually the benefit of incrementing rear as rear plus 1 mod max that once you reach to the maximum position you again come to the 0th position fine so this is how you have overcome the problem which we were facing in linear queue fine okay and similarly front is equal to front plus 1 mod mod max fine so you have to remember all these things in your mind and then we can do anything so uh, this was the linear representation of a circular queue let's start with basic operation so either it's a circular queue either it's a linear queue they, they all have a same operation that means nq to insert element dq to delete element peak to see which element is at front peak means to to see to only see which element is at front is full will check the queue is full is empty will check the queue is empty front is the pointer used to delete element from front rear is for a pointer which insert the element from rear this is all we have discussed many times now let's start with the algorithm of circular queue where we'll discuss nq algorithm now if you want to nq an element in a queue that is if you want to insert an element in a queue first thing which you will check is queue full this means you can only insert if there is a availability of a space if i gave you a bottle suppose if i gave you a bottle if i gave you a bottle and ask you to fill water in it and suppose the bottle is already filled what what will happen what you will say sir i'm sorry i cannot pour i cannot fill water in this bottle because this water is already full if i'll pour water in this bottle it will overflow so this is what's saying check if the queue is full if the queue is full produce overflow error fine okay if suppose queue is not full then you have a privilege of entry or you have a privilege privilege of inserting element if the queue is not full then first of all what you do you increment rear that is rear point to the next empty space and then you add data to the location where rear is pointing fine and then you return success yes my job is done so i i gave you a, I, I, I give you example so this is uh, what is this this is a queue and suppose uh, there are a few elements 2 5 1 7 9 6 3 8 so what is front 0 what is rear seven fine just now q is full it is in front of you that q is full now let's see the algorithm so you have an nq algorithm and i have used this uh, linear representation of a uh, linear representation of a q because there is nothing like circular in a memory everything is a linear only what we do after seven will jump to zero position that is if i say here you have an element zero uh, i'm sorry if i say here you have an element two then you have a five then you have one then seven then nine then six then three then eight fine so this is what actual representation actual representation of circular queue in a memory fine where front is pointing to the zero and rear is pointing to seven fine right like, let's start so uh, let, let me let me give you a very good example let's start with example okay so uh this is an LQ, nq algorithm suppose i raised a request of nq 17 will i able to nq 17 in this particular queue currently in front of you what will i will call this function i'll pass 17 to the data i'll check is rear plus one what is the value of rear right now rear the value of rear i'm writing over here the value of rear is seven and value of front is zero if rear plus one what and what is the value of max I'll, I'll write also that what is the value of max max value is 8 because the size of q is 8 from, from 0 to 7 is rear plus 1 is 7 plus 1 mod 8 that is 8 plus 8 mod 8 is equal to front 8 mod 8 is what 0 and what is the value of front 0 is 0 equal to 0 yes 0 is equal to 0 then q is full and this is definitely a very correct a very correct statement that q is full that is once you increment once you increment rear by one and you are reaching the front position this means that the q is completely packed you cannot insert any element so what i'll raise simply i will say written overflow and i'll write overflow no i cannot but but now if you have this condition suppose if you have this condition that q is empty if the q is empty so what will be the value of front and rear i have already told you if the value of q is if the if, if the q is if the q is empty then front is minus one rear is minus one else if so it will come and check first of all first condition rear plus one what is the value of rear minus one minus one plus one is what zero zero mod eight is what zero is zero equal to what is the value of front minus one is zero equal to minus one no so condition false 
so what i'll do i'll come to else if part is front equal to rear equal to minus one yes front and rear both are minus one this is this means q is empty yes absolutely the q is empty the currently the q is empty fine so what you do put front and rear both equal to zero that is you are initializing both with the value zero that now they will point to the first index of array either it's a circular array so that front and rear both will point to the index and now what you will do this is outside else this is not the part of else so in in q rear what is the value of rear zero so in q zero you will put data what data you have suppose i want to nq seven so what you will uh, this zero will have this zeroth position will have seven over here fine okay now what will happen uh, it will come out so this was the second condition fine now i i give you the third condition now suppose this is there is something like that uh, i give you an example like uh, suppose of uh, 7, 9, 10, 12, 3, 2. So what is the value of front? 2. What is the value of rear? Uh, this is uh, 7. Now if you want to in and Q 13, what will happen? You will pass 13 over here. Fine. What is the current value of front? 2. What is the current value of rear 7? Fine. Okay. This means that rear is at last position, but still you have a two vacant space. What you will do? You will come here. You will check its rear plus 1. What is the value of rear 7? It's 7 plus 1. 7 plus what is 7 plus 1? 8. 8 mod 8 is what? 0. It is 0 equal to front. What is the value of front 2? Is 0 equal to 2? No. 0 is not equal to 2. So condition become false. That is Q is not full. And it is very true that Q is not full. But what would if it this is a linear queue then in that case you will get a full queue but else if is front and rear both are equal to minus one no they both are not minus one they are seven and two so this is also false i'll come here and what i'll do i'll increment i'll rear plus one what is rear seven seven plus one is what eight eight mod eight will give you zero so the new value of rear will become zero that will rear will point here fine so rear will point here and in q rear so in q0 you will insert data what is data 13 that is you can clearly see that after 7 you are coming to 0th position so this is what nq algorithm of nq algorithm of circular queue fine okay so what the main point you have to remember is that while incrementing rear you will increment not rear plus 1 you will increment rear plus 1 mod max by mod mod max so what is the benefit of using this that after the maximum position it will again point to the zeroth position fine okay now comes the dq dq means to delete an element so again i'm giving you example suppose you came to me and you said sir i'm very thirsty i need water so i give you a bottle to have a water but bottle is empty will you be able to drink water no since the bottle is empty you cannot delete any water from this fine that is you cannot take out any water from that so what you will say sir bo bottle is empty that means underflow fine so check if the queue is empty you are there to delete element but you found that queue is already empty so if the queue is empty produce underflow if queue is full produce overflow if you are inserting and if queue is empty and you are deleting then produce underflow error and exit but suppose if this is not the case if q is not empty that is there are some element now first of all you have to delete the element from front and then increment front while in if nq we were incrementing rear first and then we were we were incrementing rear and then we were inserting but in deletion in dq will delete first and then increment front fine so this is important part you have to keep in mind and this is a common sense fine so let's see you have a q then you have a Q over here and let's see the algorithm. So you you were asked to delete an element. You have a Q. Is there any element? No, there is no element. So if there is no element, then front value is what? Minus one. Rear value is what? Minus one. This is what I already told you many times. It will come here. It will check. Is front equal to minus one? Yes, front is minus one. Then simply write Q is full and return overflow. You will return overflow. I cannot delete anything. Fine. So this is the first condition. Now comes the second condition. So suppose this is the condition that you have 12, 13, 2, 5 and 9. That is front is at 0 and rear is at 4. That is front is at 0 and rear and rear is at 4. Now what happens? Now actually what happens? You gave a command to DQ. In DQ you need not to pass any parameter because you are deleting an element you are not inserting so you call dq what will happen it will come here and it will check is front equal to minus one no front is zero 
so condition is false is front and rear both are equal no front and rear are not equal yes front and rear are not equal front is 0 rear is 4 so what will happen it will come to the else part what it will do it will delete data first so data will have q front what is the value of front 0 so what is the value of q 0 12 so what will happen this data will have 12 now fine okay so that is what you have uh, deleted that is you have deleted this it will actually not delete but i'm showing you showing you that it's deleted fine okay so this data will have now 12 and what you will do you will increment front now you will not simply increment by a front like front is equal to front plus one you will have to use max because after seven what will come zero will come so front what is value of front zero zero plus one is one one mod what is the value of max eight one mod eight is what one so front value will become one so front will come here fine okay now what happens now what happens again you raised a dq command so again when you raise the dq command now front is at one position what will happen again the same processor procedure will take place and front will be incremented to two again if you delete it two what will happen front will come here fine and you uh, now you again raise the dq condition you delete it five and front will come here fine now see the third condition now again what happens now here you you see the front value is four and rear value is four the front and rear both are four fine now what happens actually now if you want to delete what will you see you will come again here that if is front equal to minus one no front is not minus one front is not minus one because front is four is front and rear equal yes now front and rear are equal and this proves that q has only one element so always remember if front and rear both are equal then q has only one element so what will happen it will delay delete data first so what will have you will have data will have q front what is the value of front 4 so q what is the value of q 4 9 so i will delete this 9 and put it to the data so data will have 9 so suppose i am deleting again i am saying it will not practically get deleted i am i am showing you that it's deleted now so what will happen i'll what now since 9 was the last element and now there is no element so what I do I'll make front and rear both equal to minus 1 so then front and rear both will become equal to minus 1 fine okay now I'm giving you one more example now I'm giving you one more example is that suppose you have element uh, uh, suppose something like that 9 7 6 4 fine okay now uh, uh, so what what is the value of front so what is the value of front the value of front is 4 and the value of rear is 7 now what you did you inserted few element so what what you insert suppose you inserted uh, uh, you inserted 13 and 15 so what will be the value of rear i told you again uh, rear will come here to the first the so rear will come here now what happens now you deleted few elements suppose you deleted 9 Set. suppose you deleted 9 uh, 7 6 so what will happen front will come here okay now again you raise after this now you see that after this you again pressed dq that is you again called a dq function so what will happen the current value of front is 7 the current value of rear is 1 now see what will happen is front equal to minus 1 no front is 7 is front and rear both are equal no they are not equal condition false it will go to the else part it will delete data from q front what is the value of q front that is front value 7 that what is the element 4 so data will have now 4 value and i so so sorry sorry so data data will have 4 okay then what i'll do i'll increment front front is equal to front plus 1 what is the value of front 7 plus 1 mod max what is the value of max max is 8 then 8 mod 8 is what 0 so the new value of front becomes 0 so this is i wanted to tell you once you delete the last element front will also point to the uh, zero first uh, position fine similarly uh, where rear was moving from last to zero position similar in uh, in a same manner front will also behave like that because we are not incrementing front is equal to front plus one while we are incrementing front is equal to front plus one mod, mod max fine 